guys and welcome to another quick video tutorial here on the Kiki Manny Photography and Orms blog. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I want to cover again Photoshop Basics and Tools Part 4. Yes that's right, Basics again. If you haven't seen the other tutorials about the few first tools that we actually did from the Move tool down to the Healing Brush set, uh, please view Part 1, 2 and 3 in the Photoshop Basics and Tools tutorials. Alright, so in today's tutorial pretty much what I want to show you guys is from the Spot Healing Brush tool healing brush tool and patch tool not so much about these tools we covered them already in a tutorial called the healing brush set so if you want to view that please fall back on that tutorial in today's tutorial I want to talk about red eye tool and I also want to talk more briefly about the brush tool and pencil tool not so much about color replacement tool and mixer brush tool because I don't really work a lot with these two tools and I don't know if you guys will also use them so much so let's talk then just about brush tool and pencil tool Alright, so let's get started with our first tool, which will be the red eye tool. Pretty much what this tool does is you can just select it and take red out of your eyes. Now in my image I don't have any reds currently, so I will quickly create some reds and then we'll just take them out. Um, the first thing that I always do, like I said before, I'm going to duplicate my layer over here, just drag it onto the new layer icon, double click on there and rename that to retouch layer. Because we want to work very constructive, if we do a mistake we can always fall back onto original layer. Okay, now in our original layer I'm going to just take my marking tool over here, el elliptical marking tool, select that, going to zoom in a little bit more and I'm just going to very quickly create some reds in that eye. Okay, over here, move that over there go over to my brush. Um, in my brush I'm going to select the foreground color just to be super red and now if I'm going to paint I'll just have red. So I need to still change my blending modes here at the top to overlay or soft light. I want to keep it to soft light, paint really quickly over there just a little bit and then say come on D that and now I've got pretty much just a red eye. Maybe erase that a little bit. Okay, red eye and now have a look. Once I go over here and select my red eye tool, I can directly go with that small arrow or plus actually, with that small plus and just tap into the eye and have a look. Photoshop directly desaturates all red pixels and it's out. So don't worry if you shoot at night and if you have a, a photo that has red eyes, you can really quickly with this tool take it out. Photoshop will render all the reds out, all the pixels and don't worry as you guys can currently see I don't have any color in the eye anymore but I think if you shoot it at night there won't be even any color in your eyes it will just be red so if it takes the reds out it's just going to be black and it also looks good and it just suits your image a little bit more so pretty much this tool is very handy if you have red eyes just select this tool and work from there on alright next tool is our brush tool and this brush tool is pretty much the best tool in Photoshop and works for me I work with this tool every every single time so like I showed you guys before, in this brush tool, uh, pretty much at the top here again we've got our application bar and in here you can change your brush again. At the first start over here you can take some presets, then next thing over here is pretty much your size like I showed you guys always before and your hardness and now down here you can also change between br different brushes which I will show you now, now in a moment. Then over here next thing that we got is another brush set and you can actually access that whole set and tune your brush a little bit. I'm also going to show you guys that in a little bit. Then over here, mode again, obviously our blending modes, pretty much the same like you will have on your layers down here, also your blending options. So under our blending options, I was just going to take that back to normal. Um, opacity, also very easy, opacity, pretty much just how much, how strong you're painting with this and flow, how consistently you're painting with this again. The other tools, I'm not so much working with these tools, sorry. Alright, on our retouch layer now, which I want to do uh, is pretty much just with my brush, paint some really straight on stuff. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer here and maybe change my foreground colors back to white with X. And now have a look. I'm working with the Continuous 4 board again, so I'm able via my board to change my brush size really quickly. That's one tip. If you don't have this, try to get this board. It's really, really handy and easy to work with. Okay, and now before we even start with the brush, hold Control and Alt together. Pretty much this just works on CS5. Now you can work with your uh, mouse, left or right, and you can also change your brush size over here. As you guys can also notice here at the top, it starts to get bigger or smaller again. 
And say for instance I want to have it like this big, say around almost 700 um, pixels, then I can also go up and down with my mouse and this pretty much triggers the hardness of my brush. So if I want to have it super hard, I'll take it all the way down and now I have a pretty much hard edge as you guys can see. If I take it up again, it starts to feather and feather and feather more. Okay, so I want to keep it over here a little bit, just take it down a little bit and keep it over there. Okay, pretty much what the brush does again, it paints just like a normal brush over your image. At the top here, you can actually change your blending modes like I showed you before. Say soft light, you can paint with a little bit of white. You can paint on overlay and that stuff. I'm going to talk about these stuffs in the future tutorials. For now, just let's talk about the brush itself. Okay, on the brush, as you currently see, I just have a normal fat brush but I want to actually change that brush a little bit. Say for instance down here you've got a few different brush uh, nibs or uh, different tips to actually change your brush. Say for instance I'm going to select this brush now, have a look my whole brush actually changed already. I'm just going to make it a little, little bigger so you can actually see what's happening right now. You can see that my brush totally looks different and we got all these streaks and that's going to be our brush now. So say for instance as I paint you will directly see that we are painting with this weird things, looks very windy dish um, and then we just have this normal weird brush. So I don't know what you call this brush on the left hand side you can also see how I'm moving with the pen. So say for instance I'm tapping right from the top then I can fall back to the left and or to the right and have a look at the top. The pencil also goes with, so you can see how pretty much which direction you're painting. So I, th I would say if you are a painter, this stuff comes in very, very handy if you're working digitally. All right, then over here, again, you've got some more brushes and to create really, really creative stuff. Just going to go down a little bit in my image to show you guys. Create very creative stuff. You can also tap once to just create patterns and stuff. Um, I sometimes worked with this, especially if I create logos or something small like that or just want to do some graphic design stuff, I work a lot with brushes. To do my photoshopping or uh, retouching on images, I don't work so much with all these artistic brushes. Say for instance down here, I've got a little, say a star, you can also tap that once and you directly will have a star really weird stuff. Um, down here you get some more brushes, I actually got a few brushes already which I will also show you guys in the future tutorials how I work with some brushes on some images to get some effects. Okay, so that's pretty much how you actually get some new styles of brushes. Um, before I actually stop with that, I quickly want to go online and just show you guys this website called brusheasy.com has some pretty awesome uh, brushes so you can just go onto here and download free brushes they all for free and you can get different textures different patterns whatever you're looking for and you maybe want to just create in like a duplicate layer or something and with a different blending mode just to get a little bit of texture onto your images you can actually go and download these grungy uh, brushes over here and then paint them in a little bit which is very nice and handy alright so pretty much that's a normal way how I work with these brushes and with just getting effects but now let me just quickly delete our retouch layer create a new reti retouch layer over here and with our new retouch layer I want to show you guys what are you able to do while when we retouching now say for instance I'm just gonna go back into my presets here at the top and select a normal uh, s size brush again very soft feathered and now I'm also going to go over here which is our brush set and if you tap on this we have a new brush set now what this brush set pretty much does is at the top you will see it here brush tip shape you can pretty much just fine-tune your whole brush a little bit at the moment as you guys can see I still have a soft brush I'm going to just select a super hard brush over here you can change your size again and now have a look under here under spacing this comes in handy sometimes you can actually change the spacing a little bit about your brush if you want to get it a little bit more like a wormy effect or if you even want to you can space your whole brush strokes a little bit more say for instance you want to have it as wide as that now have a look if I paint with the brush again I'm just gonna make a size a little bit bigger here if I paint now I will just have to create all oh, it pretty much just creates these balls if you want to and I don't really need to um, pick up my brush I can just paint with one consistent flow and it will create these round balls. If I'm going to take that down until to here it creates this wormy effect if you want to have a look there you go create a wormy effect so if you want to do some really artistic stuff this also comes in handy sometimes or if you need to Photoshop with some stuff it comes in handy sometimes. Then again here at the top you have all your different brush sets or st um, nibs 
Um, on the left hand side pretty much you can tweak your brush again a little bit with shape dynamics, you can scattering that, you can texture that, you can dual brush, color dynamics, transfer. Try these things out, I don't work too much with this, just one more step that I always work with. I'm just going to take my spacing down again and go on to shape dynamics. I'm going to select shape dynamics and as you guys can already see my whole shape looks like this which does look a little bit weird. Let me explain it quickly to you guys. Under control I can select pen pressure. So if you're working with Vacuum Continuous 4 board you can set your brush pressure to this or set it to pen pressure. And now pretty much when you work with a pen tool or brush tool or whatever you're working with, this uh, technique applies to all of these tools. So it, the more pressure I apply, the thicker my brush gets. So say for instance, I've got this wide brush now, but if I pressure, press just a little bit, it will just create this little, little line. And the more I press, the thicker my brush gets. So this comes in very handy if I have to paint hair or Photoshop some hair or something like that. Say for instance, now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more, very closely onto the hand here. If I want to just create a very small streak, as I want to create some hair or something, have a look how my brush already changes to a very nice hair flow and now I can paint in very nice hair and nobody will really notice that it's all just a brush and fake. So if I take my brush size even down and create some hair over here, that comes in really, really handy. I'm going to do some future tutorials about that, how to work with hair. For now, it's just how to work with the brush tool. Alright, so let's get out of that again. Just going to make my brush size a little bit bigger in. So as you guys can see, it also starts to get bigger or smaller over here. And if you want to try that a little bit out, try a little bit what works for you down here. For me, mostly, it's just the shape dynamics and that's what I'm happy with. Okay, I'm just going to X that again. And now pretty much just to go back to the pen tool quickly. Just going to take my retouch layer, delete that, and for now I'm just going to create a new layer just to work on that. We're not going to do another retouch layer now. Under the tools, pencil tool. Now pretty much this pencil tool works exactly the same like the brush tool, just ha it has a way, way thinner um, nib and you can paint very, very close stuff with that and paint more precise. So if you need to paint small things, you can actually change that again and work with the pencil tool. Over here I'm just taking my brush size all up or the pencil size really up a lot again. And just to show you guys, you can tap that once or just hold it with the mouse and then you can create some new artistic stuff again. Over here, if you want to write or if you want to fill something or just brush something in, I would actually then say pencil something in, you can use the pencil again. Pretty much it works exactly the same like the brush tool. Just has a few more simpler uh, brushes over here. And as you guys can see, different things again, say for instance some other strokes, leaves or stars again, you can pretty much do the same again. Then color replacement tool, which I would said I'll talk just really roughly about it. P color replacement tool pretty much works for me like this. I mostly go down here, select a new color, say for instance yellow, and just have that as my foreground color. And now I can already paint with that foreground color onto my object and directly that color will be overtaken in a new blending mode. So what does this actually mean? Over here in the top you have different blending options again, hue, saturation, color, luminosity. Most probably it's just going to work on color as I showed you guys before here and if I paint now it will directly just overtake that color. Okay, I have to paint on the original layer now because on our layer 1 here is nothing so it can't be painted on something. So I'm going to just delete that, just to create a duplicate of that, retouch quickly and then I'm going to paint on to here with yellow color and as you guys can see then it already starts picking up all the yellows and will just overtake the color so you're not going to create a new layer with r yellow it just pretty much paints on your pixels that you have already and cr pretty much turns them into yellow so that's the only way I work with this tool then mix a brush tool if you're very artistic in creating some painty stuff you can actually work with this tool just to mix two colors with each other say for instance yellow and blue and you want to just mix that paint over here and you'll directly see that it merges in together and create some really really weird new stuff so if you want to blur something or you want to do a very artistic thing you can actually paint with this tool and just go nuts to be honest with you guys, for my retouching stuff, I never, never really work with this tool. So, for those of you who find this tool helpful, try it out. So, this was pretty much my quick tutorial on Photoshop Basics and Tools Part 4. If you guys still have any questions about this tutorial, please feel free to email me to team at mannyphotography.co.za. My name is Manny, thank you guys for watching and see you all next week on another technical tutorial. Bye-bye.